This is Val Borg, and it's day 24 of our racing career, and we're doing Sebring. So I uploaded this video to YouTube and then realized uh, my mic wasn't working the whole time this was going on. So I was talking about how we were setting up the uh, BMW. We're pretty sure last time that the setup was just too loose and we need to tighten up the setup. So that's what we were working on. Uh, we're going to put a stagger in the camber so that uh, the, it would help the car turn because there's a lot more right hand turns on Sebring than there are left. So we were putting negative, we were putting a, a difference in the camber to help with the turn. Camber is the angle of the tire. So here, what I thought we were doing was uh, increasing the camber. Uh, the outward camber at the bottom of the tires so that the tires angled more outward so when we go in a turn it would help the car go to the right. What I didn't realize is both these tires were turned all the way inward so that the bottom of the tire was so far inside that the tops of the tires were leaning out. Or that's what I thought was going on but what was actually happening was the top was leaned all the way in so the bottom of the tires were leaned all the way out. So what I did here was actually stand up the left front tire a little bit, uh, which should have actually caused it to turn better the other way, except for the fact that the camber was so far past what uh, uh, the correct setting that I actually increased the amount of tire touching the ground in the corner because we were it was way overdue. What I should have done if it had been set correctly is I should have actually uh, straightened up this tire. Uh, it would have caused it to drift to the right a little. Instead, this would have actually caused it to drift to the left, but in the corner. It actually, because there, this was closer to the actual degree needed, there's more contact for the front rear, the front tires. So, this uh, increasing the spring is what actually tightens up the front. Um, Uh, on the next episode, I'll go in depth into some of the, the things I figured out with the setup and some changes uh, I want to try. Because uh, I think actually, because the camber was so far out from the actual, like what the track probably needs as far as camber, uh, that we could probably do a lot better. Some on cold tires, and, and my favorite thing to do when I'm on cold tires is drive when drive like I'm not on cold tires. Uh, you know, there's something in my brain that flips that says cold tires are just a state of mind. And then I go to brake and miss the turn because I'm on cold tires. <laughs> my brain does not accept cold tires. It's just like, oh, cold tires? Don't care. Between that and uh, an innate belief that you don't need a brake pedal, yeah, those two don't work together too well. So I managed to slow down for that curve and actually take my time and come around it. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. I'd figured out by now that I'd definitely tighten up the car enough to where I could actually drive it a lot better. And, uh, you know, the tires were still cold, so I was still taking it easier, but I was starting to get at the idea that, hey, maybe I'd done something. And then I figured out, hey, if you hit that curve a little too wide, you will, uh, upset the car. But right there, I was figuring out, wow, this drives so much better through that area. Uh, it might be a little too tight, actually. 
you kind of want to mix somewhere in between this how loose it was and how tight it is but I think one of the things that was making it so loose was the fact that we had no contact the contact patch in the corner for the tire is so small uh, so once we figure out what the actual camera needs to be and I'll explain how we figure out we're not at the right camera in a little bit because uh, I actually stop in the video and I'm looking at the tire pressures and the tire wear after this round and you can tell hey you're definitely not not on the right setting um, But anyway, we'll get to that in a little bit. So this lap, we were actually making a pretty good run. And then we did what we always do. We forget, oh yeah, you got to stop for this turn. So I was trying to dirt track around that turn and it didn't work so well. Oh, look. We're doing the green for that segment. We're only uh, 8.9 seconds behind instead of 9. Uh, tire pressures are starting to come up, so I was starting to figure out, hey, this is actually working pretty good. Yeah, we're actually a little too tight, but... Uh, it is way better than as loose as we were. Yeah, we shaved off a quarter second in that turn. That was the first time I figured out, hey, this might work out pretty well. You know, we missed this turn bad, so we're killing this segment, but... Uh, they are optimal drop below two, 202. So yeah, this is where I was starting to figure out, hey, maybe we got something here. Well, that was the first time I come through there and actually had like, felt like I was in a turn. Yeah, we were pretty much right there on it. Starting a good, good, good lap. Still don't have this turn figured out as much. Uh -huh. Still got to be figured out. And when I change the setup on the car, it's going to change all this stuff. It's going to change how it feels in every one of them. So, yeah. Uh, we kind of missed that first turn a little bit. But uh, we hit the second turn well enough to where we, we gained a lot of time. You know, we shaped a third of a second off in that turn. And of course, typical me, you know, one turn at a time, we're in a rig. We're going to take our, uh, our official Vileborg track through there. Call that the Vileborg turn. But the tires are starting to get up, so I'm starting to feel like Superman. And then I drive off into the tire bear. <laughs> Just when you think it's safe, uh, I wreck. And the tires are cold again. We all know what happens with me and cold tires. This feels like this is beginning to snowball here, you know what I mean? Yeah, see, if I hit that right, I can pick up a lot of time to that corner. I was just a little slow and a little off. But we did get a good run coming out of there. And then what do I do? Yep, you guessed it. Drive off into uh, Valborg's corner. Uh, because we forgot to break. 
feel like this is a reoccurring theme. I don't know. Driving too hard on cold tires again. It's funny, I did a Motor Mayhem and an Enduro series, so uh, I think it was yesterday. And uh, I've been driving the BMW, which is quite a bit faster than the, the Mazda. And uh, it felt slow in the Mazda. I was like, damn, do I need to get out and push? Because that Mazda is just going too slow. Yeah, the oversteer on that corner is bad. Uh, I guess the understeer is really what it is. The car is a little too tight, basically. Is what I'm saying. But we did shave a third of a second off, and we're in the green. We were in the green till I messed up the exit, but uh, it was still coming back. So we started out on the good side of a lap. Yeah, we got a good run coming down in this corner. We lost time on that corner, but, uh, yeah, we just lost time on that corner. We didn't do too well coming through there. We had a bright spot in there where we took off some time, but we also threw a lot of time at it. Hey, look, I slowed down. We actually had a pretty good corner for that corner, considering how many times I've added 10 seconds to a lap in that corner. I only lose like three tenths in that corner is good. And then we're going to dirt track it across there. Remember, we're still on cold tires. They're still only two pounds up. Once they get about three pounds up, they're pretty warm. Uh, you know, three to three and a half is usually the really good spot. And we, uh, we missed that turn because we were playing with that. And the, changing the thing over there. We got a really good run through here. Good angles. And then we missed the corner. And then we, you know, it's the car so tight. Uh... We're turning a lot into that corner, and then when a, the car finally sets and starts turning, we got too much grip, and we're shooting towards the wall there. So, the car's too tight. So that'll be something to work on. We finally got a really good run through here, or a pretty good run through here. Uh, even with all the crap that we did, we still set a 204.509. It's the fastest lap I'd ever turned in this car. Last lap. Uh, so as slow as that lap looked, it was the fastest lap I'd ever run in, in this car. On this track. So, uh, yeah, it looked bad, but it wasn't, it wasn't really a bad lap. Ooh, look, we actually made the turn. We actually picked up a little bit of time, and then my exit off of that cost us a couple tenths. But I mean, at this time, we're still tracking pretty good. Gained a tenth and then lost two tenths. Typical me, three tenths, four tenths. Yeah, because of the, the tightness of the car, as far as it had been loose, I can go deeper into these corners. So we're carrying a little bit more speed into the corners. And, uh, you know, because we're getting more acceleration off, I'm staying green in the acceler, you know, through the acceleration zones a lot further. Getting to a higher speed at the end of the straights and stuff. 
And then we're off course. So at this point, we're actually still running a pretty good time. One of the things I figured out is uh, looking through the spring descriptions, uh, those bumps right there, because we're running such stiff front springs, it's actually hurting us because the car is bouncing on, this, on those instead of absorbing the, the bounce from the, the bumps. So we turned another fastest lap, even with all the crap that was going on in that that lap, we still turned a 203.799, which was our new fastest lap ever. Not official, obviously, but it was our new fastest lap ever. So yeah, we, we were a little off on the first segment. We made a little bit of it up on the second segment. Coming into our favorite turn, and for once, we actually hit it pretty good. We lost it coming off. But overall, we're in a pretty good shape at this point. We're only a quarter second behind Optimum. That corner is my Achilles heel. I haven't quite figured that corner out yet. Another good segment. Ooh, the leg getting in there and threw us off for this angle. It's cost us some time. As tight as we were, if we'd been a little bit looser and you know, getting into that corner, we would have had such a we'd get such a better run coming down here. Tighten up the car a little too much. So that's something we got to figure out too. I need to soften those springs in the front back up somehow and still have grip. Um, looking at the camera settings later, hint, uh, I think I might be able to do that. We'll just have more, we have more tire contacting the road in the corner. We'll be able to turn better. So, uh, the hint there is that I'm pretty sure we got plenty of room to play with as far as getting more contact in the corner. But we were in a 2.02.398. <laughs> so, guess what? That's a pretty damn fast lap. That's two seconds faster than any lap we'd ever run before on this track in this car. Two seconds. That's a huge leap. Yeah, I'm starting to smell myself at this point. So you know what happens when that happens. You guessed it. Probably going to wreck here shortly. Yeah, we're still muscling this really out of shape car. There we go. It wasn't a bad one. I don't think you get an encounter thing for that, but it just stirs up your entry and exit. I actually got a pretty good run, but we messed up the front end of that turn, so... We're green and timer's coming down, but... No. Oh. Yeah. Whew. You know, those bumps, man, that car pushes way out there on those bumps with stiffer springs. Yeah, so I think I got something figured out. What we'll to do, what we'll to test something in our next test session. Uh, we'll straighten out the camera some more and try to get more contact in the corners. 
Oh, it should help us all the way around and then we can go back to a softer screen at the front. Uh, make the front end a little bit more free. Hopefully help us because it's it tightened up the car quite a bit which helped with stability. Made me feel a lot more comfortable with the car. But it also we went a little bit too much. I would definitely feel like Superman. This is a bad lap. Bad lap was better than our fastest lap ever on this track prior to this test session. Even the bad lap at this point was, you know, fast compared to what we've been running. If you want a car slightly tight, uh, it helps with forward bite and side bite and all that stuff. Uh, but if it's too tight, you can't make the arc off the turn correctly. And that's what I was fighting right here, is the fact that the car was just a little too tight. What I was fighting here is the bumps. The bumps were just kicking us around. If you hit the bumps just right through there, it'll, it'll put you in that barrier. So... We definitely need softer springs up front. Yeah, so we just turned a 203 again, like a second and a half faster than any lap we'd ever turn on this track prior to this test session. So we are just flying at this point. The, uh, the tires are starting to get overheated. Again, this is a camber issue, so yeah, we're going to start pushing on the laps. Uh, it's better than it was before, but we're still, we still got to figure out something here. We're still overcooking the tires. I actually tried backing off in the test session to see if we could cool the tires down. And it somewhat worked, but we were just so slow it wasn't worth it. So this is pretty much where I started trying to slow it down. Like, oh, maybe if we slow it down, we can cool the tires down. Maybe we need to do, like, stance, slow it down, speed it up, slow it down, speed it up. To try to keep the tire pressure down. But... The honest truth of it is that we just need the camera to be right. Uh, I mean, you could still overcook the tires with the camera wrong, but uh, when the weight's more evenly displaced across uh, the four tires, uh, well, two tires, because you can't get, like on a circle track, you can have negative camber on one side and positive camber on the other side, and it will help you a lot in the turns. And depending on the uh, the angle of the track, you can get uh, both tires to, or all the tires to contact evenly in the turn. Uh, on a track like this, you can't set it up that way because you got left turns and right turns. So you don't want to set it up that way. Well, I don't think you do. Uh, obviously, we could probably test that and check, see what it looks like. Uh, but if we set it up for right turns, it would make left turns pretty, pretty brutal. I don't think we want to do that. Well, give it a shot, because I'm not game for anything, but... I think probably the answer is just to have it, have them both at the right negative angle. Uh, to where no matter whether you're turning left or you're turning right, you're hitting maximum contact for that corner. Yeah, we tried slowing down and hit a 208. 
And we're just, you know, tires just are not, they're not holding up at this point. And it's because we got too much camera, so we're just, uh, we're just eating those inside edges because that's all that's touching the ground is the inside edge of the tires. Yeah, at this point, we really just started to slow down, try to slow down a lot. I just wasn't doing anything for us. So I'm not really a fan of the BMW. Uh, it's easiest, to, I guess it's easiest to set up to be free of the cars I've experienced so far right now. Like the GTE is just, uh, it's very stiff suspension. It's very, it, it speaks more to the way I like to drive. But, uh, it's hard to get it to free up, I would imagine. I don't see, I haven't tried it, but uh, this BMW is, you have to do some things, and I'm not sure if you can get it to do what you want it to do always. You may have to adapt to it more than it adapts to you just because of the way the car is. I know one thing, it supposedly has some of the best opportunity for launch down a straightaway just got to get the right touch figured out uh, like the setup we have in it right now is 53% uh, rear weight uh, a lot of times you want the car to be like 50 50 you want to you want to even balance between the front weight and the back weight uh, but that's uh the, as much power as this car has got if you didn't have that much weight in the back of the car uh you'd wheel hop when you took off and when you're accelerating now is that a big deal too much uh only if you use an automatic transmission yeah, I was finally just so loose pushing it that I finally just spun. But we did put in another 203 right there at the end. Again, all this stuff is just a whole different world faster than what we've been running. Uh, that 202 range is... Uh, I mean, that's, that's about where people running in my class. That's probably a good top 10... Uh, run in a, like a 30 car field 20 30 car field of a race with, at people with my eye rating so it's not it's not it's not bad at all top 10 top 20 finish in other words enough to increase our eye rating so but i'm never satisfied if we can get more out of it i'd love to get into the sub 2 range uh, our optimal lap is kind of close. If we're running twos, I'd be happy. Because that means we'd be on the front edge of, you know, top five car kind of. So, yeah, if we get down to the two, to turn in twos, I'd be happy. If we get sub twos, I'd be really happy. Oh. 
obviously the the aliens are running 154 155 but I don't think we're gonna get there and that's hot lap uh, the front runners are like losing a second second and a half over the course of a race uh, you know as you go further and further away uh, more and more people are losing you know losing time as the laps go on I'm guessing because their setup's not right and wearing out the tires yeah this time I pretty much figured out that everything was really loose I was going to try to do a couple more laps, but I think I reckon he was only. Yep, there we go. That's when I'm like, all right. I'm tired of just pretty much given up uh, we tried to slow down and we'd actually gotten this number to come down a little bit but we were just losing too much grip still even with the pressure coming down and you can't run that slow all the time Yeah, totally missed that turn. I had a really good run down that stretch that time. Messed up the part coming into it, but got a good run. Yeah, I was uh, sit down and watch this on uh, on my TV off my YouTube channel, and uh, I turned it on and I was like trying to turn up the volume on the TV because I thought the TV was muted, or I turned the volume all the way down. Still nothing. The car starts moving. I start hearing the sound from the car, and I'm like, oh man, no mic. Yeah, stubborn me is still trying to turn laps and cool off the tires at the same time. Oh, I remember why I stopped. Well, what the official stop point was now. It's like, when did I stop? Because... I was pretty stubborn to keep running laps even though the tires are giving up. Uh, I hadn't seen the tire data at this point. I was still, you know, you only see the tire data after you go in and get out of the car. And I was still trying to run laps. So that's one of the reasons I didn't stop at this point. And, Five laps fuel. That was when it hit me. I've been running a long time without actually like taking myself out. You know, of course, now that I know that I haven't wrecked in a while, it's probably a good time to wreck. <laughs> Take myself out. Uh, yeah, I mean, stability wise, I'm off by a little bit in these laps and I may get loose a little bit, but I'm nowhere near as wrecky as I was like I'm not just like constantly hitting barriers and stuff it's 
to, you know, the car staying together and not getting long, clean flag fronts. That's when I finally was just like, all right, I'm done. You look at the laps. Yeah, look at this. Fastest lap ever. Fastest lap ever. Fastest lap so far of all time for me. Still faster than the fastest lap ever. Still faster than the fastest lap prior to the session. I mean, another 203 down here. And then we were trying to slow down. It just wasn't working. So I was pretty ecstatic at this point. I mean, we literally were just turning 203s to 204s, which... In a race, would probably get us top 15, top 20, somewhere in there. Uh, probably top 15. Uh, most of your 201s to 202 slow down to like 203, 204. So if we were running in this range, we'd probably be running consistently top tw top 12, 14, somewhere in there. In our, with our, our rating, our rating is like 1,200 right now. Oh. So we'd be able to... We on the plus side of the calculations. All right, so here we're looking at the tire wear. Uh, if you look at the tire wear, you can see that the tires are still all wearing towards the inside. That means our camera's off. You look at these temperatures, see how the temperatures are all getting hotter on the insides of the tires? It means that we're running way too much camber. I'm not actually sure what I was looking at there. <laughs> Is this one or this one? This one or this one? Also figured out I didn't stagger the rear camber. I had meant to do both. And I figured out I didn't do the rear camera, so the rear camera was even. <laughs> That's literally what I was saying. But yeah, we need to be able to flatten this out. So um, the wear for the most sure part should be pretty even. Uh, and a lot slower. And... Uh, the tire temperature is not going to be perfect, but we can get them close. You're never going to get this in the nature of straightaways and everything. You're never going to get everything perfect. But, uh, you know, the inside of the tire is going to be a little bit better. But your contact patch from the middle out should be pretty close. And your wear should be pretty close on the con from the middle of the tire out. Because the middle of the tire out is what's going to hit in the turn. And if your wear and temperatures are pretty even, mainly your wear is pretty even on the outside two edges. That means that you are uh, getting most of your uh, tire on the ground in the turn. So We're obviously not doing that. <laughs> you know, we're, we're wearing very badly. So... Hopefully we figure that out at some point. Mm. Insert more diatribe about how we're wearing tires very much badly. And we need to do some more stuff. Are we done? Are we done? Are we done? Uh, I was actually reading some literature that you want your outside and inside temperatures to scale no more than 20 degrees. Uh, if you do it right, some of the temperatures vary very little scale. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, we need to get our camera down. and I think we need to go back to a softer spring in the front. Uh, that'll help with some of the bumps over in, in this big turn over here and, and some of the other stuff. See if we can't 
get the front end turning and uh, get more uh, contact in the corner. Contact in the corner would mean more, more speed. So if we can keep the forward bite and get the side bite in the corner and uh, get more tire on the road, I think we'll be in good shape. No idea what I'm talking about here. Oh, uh, I know what I was talking about. I was thinking, hey, I wonder if we can re-gear the automatic transmission so that we don't downshift in the first gear. Uh, and the answer is we need to we need to switch over to the gear shifter. Uh, there's a lot more time in the gear shifter. We can get down to about two one two flat something like that in the automatic. I'm pretty sure with the gear shifter we can get down into the one fifty nine one fifty eight range. Oh. Yeah, I need to hook up the gear shifter at some point. I need to stop being lazy and actually set up the uh, the racing stand. I need to rearrange my room a little bit so I can get the racing stand in by the desk. Uh, that'll give this a lot of stability. I don't know how many times I've pulled half the steering wheel loose. One of the, you know, steering wheel's got two grips, one on each side to hold it to the desk. I don't know how many times I pulled one side loose. In the middle of a race, I've been trying to turn while the steering wheel's flopping around. So, yeah. So tomorrow we'll loosen these up and uh, we'll get the camera, see if we can't get the camera figured out. All right. Well, that's Bob Borg signing off and. Uh, I'll try to get the uh, audio version uploaded before too long.